Mr. Kite coming to you again on the Lab 207 webcast. We continue on in our series Macromolecules. Topic for today is going to be nucleic acids. I can't understate the importance of these molecules to the living world. So let's talk about our objectives for the day. They are as follows. There are three of them. Understand the function of a nucleic acid. That's kind of been a theme in our macromolecules. Got to know what they do. Compare and contrast DNA and RNA, two things that I'm sure you've heard about in basic biology classes. <clears throat> We're going to talk about how they're alike and different. And finally, describe the structure of a nucleic acid, because structure is the big thing we're con concerned about with these macromolecules. So let's start out by talking about nucleic acids themselves. What are they? What do they do? What are they for? Their biggest purpose is they transmit info from one generation to the next. Now by that I mean that everything that makes you you, those traits you inherited from your mom and dad, whether it's eyes, ears, nose, mouth, whatever, that is the work of nucleic acids, passing that information from your parents on down to you. All information for every living thing in the world is contained in its DNA. So obviously just a little bit important. It carries the info for all the cell activity. So anything that happens in any of the cells in your body, the directions for that are contained in the DNA. And finally, it directs the production of RNA and proteins. DNA itself is just information. It's RNA and proteins that actually get the work done. So I cannot state enough how important nucleic acids are. The living world would not exist without this molecule. It's all about structure all the time. So we've talked about monomers building polymers all the way through this series. So let's talk about the monomer of a nucleic acid. Its monomer is called a nucleotide. And there are three basic parts of a nucleotide that you need to be aware of. The phosphate, sugar, and nitrogenous base. Now I got kind of a junky drawing here, but you can see the basic parts of it. Right here's your phosphate, here is your sugar, and there is the base. All of those, like those three components, doesn't matter whether you're in DNA or RNA, the nucleotide is going to be made of those same three things, phosphate, sugar, and base. Now, I told you with monomers, we got to keep track of the bonds holding them together. In this case, nucleotides are held together by two bonds. First one is a phosphodiester linkage. There's a big word for the day. Phosphodiester linkages hook one, pho one nucleotide to the next nucleotide vertically. They are these bonds right here that hook the phosphate of one to the sugar of the next. And this backbone of our nucleic acid is called a sugar phosphate backbone because the sugar alternates with the phosphate. Sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, all connected by phosphodiester bonds. Now the other bond is hydrogen bonds. These only occur in DNA but they hold one base to the other base. So those are your bonds on a nucleotide. Let's talk about a few more parts of nucleotides that are really important. The sugar. I'm sure you've heard of DNA and RNA. They differ in their sugar. Well, there's a couple of differences, but that's the major one. So if you look at the structures over there on the right-hand side, you can see that these things are completely identical except for one lone oxygen. Ribose has got an OH group, deoxyribose, has an H. If you think about the names, it makes sense. Deoxy minus the oxygen, deoxyribose, no oxygen. So that is the difference between ribose and deoxyribose. OH and ribose, just a plain H in deoxyribose. And finally, the last part of our nucleotide monomer. Remember the three parts are the phosphate, the sugar, and the base. Let's talk about the bases. They come in two varieties. <clears throat> pyrimidines and purines. Now pyrimidines are nitrogenous bases that have only one, one ring. Sorry, words are hard sometimes. If you look at a diagram over here, there is one ring, one ring, one ring, one ring. And there are three pyrimidine bases. They are cytosine, uracil, and thiamine. The easiest way to remember this is pyramids cut. So pyrimidines, C-U-T, pyramids cut. And then you've got your purines, which have two rings, kind of like this one, this one, that one, and that one. <clears throat> and your two 
purines to keep track of, our adenine and guanine. Now, a major thing to keep in mind, and this is going to be really important when we talk about DNA, purines always pair with pyrimidine. So I'll give you specific pairings in a moment, but you always have one ring pyrimidine paired up with a two ring purine. All right, <clears throat> let's get our comparison on DNA versus RNA. Major differences. We talked about the sugar. RNA has ribose. DNA has deoxyribose. Deoxyribose is missing that oxygen. Next thing that is different between the two is in their bases. Our RNA uses the bases A, U, C, G. You can see it up there in cleaner format. DNA uses A, T, C, and G. So when these things pair up, if you are pairing RNA with RNA, A pairs with U, C pairs with G. In DNA, you always have A pairing with T, C pairing with G. That is a hard and fast rule. It doesn't change. Final big difference between DNA and RNA is that DNA is double-stranded. You can see the double-stranded helix right here. It is a ladder. RNA just has one strand. It is only half of a ladder. Now, I guess another thing to note that I didn't really put up here, DNA resides in the nucleus of the cell and it is too big to get out. It will never leave the nucleus. That's why we say it is just information. RNA is small enough that it's able to slip inside and outside of the nucleus. It can go through little nuclear pores and it does most of the work that DNA directs. And finally, structure. This is kind of important. Five prime, three prime bonding. Now let's talk about what I mean by that. In organic chemistry, carbons are numbered to just kind of keep track of them. So if you look at our deoxyribose sugar right here, you'll see that each of the carbons have a number. That's an oxygen, so he doesn't count, but there's number one, two, three, four, and then carbon number five is up here. Each one of those carbons gets its own specific number to keep them in track. When these bases hook to each other, when those phosphates connect to the deoxyribose above them, you always have the five prime carbon or the phosphate that hangs on to the five prime carbon hooking to the three prime sugar or the three sugar on the sugar ahead of it. So this is called five prime to three prime bonding and it gives the DNA a sense of direction. So strands are called anti-parallel because they run in opposite directions. This guy, he runs in this direction because if you were to run this all the way out, the very top carbon that was open and unbonded would be a five, and the one down here that is open and unbonded is a three. Now because of the way that DNA works, that five to three over here, this guy, he runs in the opposite direction. His open end is a three up here. His open end on the bottom is five down here. So this makes DNA like a one-way street. And this is going to be really important when we get into DNA replication in a week or two. But for now, just remember that the five prime end is the end that has the open five carbon. Three prime end is the end that has the open three carbon. And that is known as being anti-parallel because the two strands run opposite each other. Final piece of information before we wrap up. All of the genetic code is contained in the sequence of nitrogen bases. Whatever order these bases are in, that is the directions for whatever needs to happen. Genes can have hundreds of thousands of bases in them. The way that you order those things determines what the gene is the instructions for. You can see right here is our complementary base pairing, A to T, C to G. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out our discussion of nucleic acids for today. Hopefully you have found it helpful. Thank you for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. We'll see you next time.